gave me this word this morning, and it's entitled, If You Will, Lord, You Can. If You Will, Lord, You Can. And we're going to be in the book of Mark, starting in chapter 1, verse 40. The book of Mark, starting in chapter 1, verse 40. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And I want you to keep in mind throughout the message, if you will, Lord, yes. you can. Yes. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, if you will, you can make me clean. If you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately, everybody say immediately, immediately, immediately the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed. Hallelujah. If you, Lord, if you will, Lord, you can. Real quick, the background of this story is Mark. I like the book of Mark. Anybody like action movies in here? <laughs> Naya likes action movies. She makes me watch action movies. But they're very quick. Everything's very quick. Well, the book of Mark is very quick acting. He goes from one thing to the next thing to the next thing to the next thing to the next thing. It's the shortest book in the Gospels. And I love that because really it's just showing Jesus move, watching him move, watching someone present a problem or an issue or a situation and Jesus moves. The next thing, th there's a problem, there's a situation, and immediately, straight away, Jesus moves. Jesus is constantly moving through this book, and I love that. There's no, like, a lot of details, there's nothing you really got to decipher through. It's just, Jesus is moving, Jesus is moving, Amen. Jesus is moving, Jesus is moving. And I believe that that's what God wants to do in your heart Amen. and in your life this morning. He just wants to move. Yeah. Yeah. We felt his presence during worship. He just wants to move. Amen. And this book constantly supports the nature of Jesus being the Messiah. That he was the Savior. That he came to move in all power. That he came to touch, he came to heal, he came to deliver, he came to strengthen, he came to rest restore, he came to bring peace that surpasses all understanding. Things that, in, that is going on in your life that no one else can reach and no one else can touch, immediately Jesus can. Amen. Straight away, Jesus can move Amen. in your life. See, you walked in this the door this morning and you didn't know, but that God was about to work a miracle yeah. in your life. Yeah. As our Amen. sister said, it it is a process. There is a process. But God also likes to move in the suddenly Amen. as well. He likes to do things immediately as well. And guess what? He can do immediately and then you can be in the process. Yes. Yes. So, yes. But we got to take one step forward, yes. right? We got to say, okay, I am willing to step into the process with you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. I am willing because, God, you see me. You see me when no one else sees me. You see me and when I'm laying down and the struggle that's going on in my heart, the struggle that's going on in my mind and my emotions. But Jesus said, immediately, I'm going to move in your life this morning. And I believe, like he said, if you will, you can. The leper knew. He didn't doubt Jesus' ability. But he said, God, if you will, here I am. Right now, here I am. We said to the youth last night, our youth group's been going well. Please, please bring your young people, 6th grade to 12th grade. But I said to them last night, I said, all you got to do is take one step to the altar and say, here I am, Jesus. Come and here I am. And Jesus wants to move in your life. And you know what those young people did? They took one step to the altar. The whole altar was filled with young people saying, I know that you can, Lord, if you will. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
Yeah. So real quick, I'm going to travel through this book real quick. It's going to be like an action film, so buckle in. Okay, get ready, because we're about to move through this. Y'all know how I like to set the scene, right? Yeah. Okay, so we open up scene one. Okay, I want you to act like we in a movie. <laughs> scene, but it's real life. Jesus is real. Yeah. Scene one, we see Jesus, John the Baptist, is calling the people to repentance. Mm -hmm. I want to say this. If you want to experience Jesus in your life, the first step is to repent. Amen. What does that mean? Not just to say, I'm sorry. Come on. Okay? It's not just to sit there and cry, even though when we're <laughs> repenting, we might cry. Yeah. But there is... A change in complete direction. Right, right, right. I was going this way. I was walking not the way of the Lord. I was going away from Him. I didn't believe. But all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. I heard something that started to move in my spirit. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, there became a sorrow. Like, I need to get with Jesus. I need to go to Jesus. I to run to Jesus and there is a change in direction that happens in the heart of man when we are running after Jesus. Hallelujah. And guess what? We ain't going to get it perfect. That's right. You're not. So right now I want you to sell in your heart. If you walked in this morning and you don't know the Lord, right? Or you haven't been walking with them for a long time, you can say, I'm not going to get it perfect. Right. And guess what? Jesus is going to say, keep on coming. Amen. <laughs> keep Amen. on coming because I love you. Keep on coming because I died for you. And even as a believer, we might be going in the right direction and all of a sudden... Go off this way a little bit, and the Holy Spirit's going to say, no, come on, come on, come on, come on back, <laughs> come on back this way, and what do we need to do? An about face, and start walking back towards the Lord, and say, guess what? I can't do it, Lord, but you can do it in me. I don't even want to. Uh oh, I don't even want to go your way, but God, change my heart. Change something in me to make it a reality in me that I need you. Listen, when we first get saved, he's got to take some things out of us that have been there for a really long time. That we've been going through for a really long time. And he doesn't expect you to do it. He's going to do it, but you need, we need to position ourselves before him. So in the beginning of this, we have a man, John the Baptist, calling out, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Bible says, the Mark chapter 1, verse 2, as it is written in the prophets, behold, I send a messenger before your face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. I want to say this. Why am I telling you this? One, the first step is repentance. Two, it says the prophets of old. That means 400 years before John the Baptist showed up in Malachi, he said there is going to be a messenger. And when that messenger shows up and points you to Jesus, you need to listen because he's going to be the savior of the world. Yeah. 400 years before John the Baptist started preaching on repentance, they had spoken about it. Jesus was already setting the stage. He was already making a way for you to receive salvation, for you to receive healing. See, sometimes we think he's not going to do it. I don't think he's going to do it. How can he fix this mess? How can he heal this? The doctor said there's no way for this to be healed. Oh, Lord. My bank account says there's no way for me to make it next week. <laughs> All right? Yeah. I just got fired from my job, and I don't know what I'm going to do. But Jesus was already set in the stage before he even showed up to say, I am going to make a way. If you will, Lord, you can. <laughs> if you will, Lord, you can. See, I want you to keep that in mind. Because he was setting it up the whole time. So in order to receive, first step would be to repent and to believe in him. Hallelujah. John the Baptist 
begins, he doesn't call himself, he doesn't call you to himself. My, my job, Pastor Matt's job, any other minister here that speaks the word of God or worships or whatever they do here. Our job isn't to say, look at me, look how great I am, look what I can do. Our job, just like John the Baptist, was to point you to Jesus. And that's what John was doing. He said in the word, there comes one mightier than I. Mightier there says, this is a force to be reckoned with. He is stronger than I. He is more powerful than I. And he's coming for you. Think about that. Amen. When he died on Calvary, Zeph, he had your name yes. in his heart. Yes. He said, Maddox, I'm coming for you. Yes. Naya, I'm coming for you. Nicole, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. I'm, they're coming. He's coming for your children. He's coming for your grandchildren. He's coming for your dad, your mom, your brother, your sister. He died for every single one of us. He said, I'm coming for you. And he's mightier than I. Hallelujah. I indeed baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what we need? We need some Holy Ghost and fire up in this church, up in our lives. I need the Holy Ghost to get up in the morning. Let me tell you. Since we need to get real in here, is what Nye and I were traveling to youth group last night, and the enemy was coming in the car like a flood. And I'll tell you, she said to me, Angela, if you feel that way, you might as well just turn around. But the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. He wants to cause us to get up. Yes. He wants yes. to call. The condition you found yourself in this morning is not the condition you're leaving here today. Amen. Okay, because he wants to cause us yeah. to get up. He Lord, wants to cause Lord. a change in our heart, a change in our mindset, and change the way we look at him and the way that what he can do for us this morning. Yes, yes, he wants to stir us with Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah. Then we see, I love this. In scene two, we see Jesus baptized with water and the Holy Spirit. So I want to say, why am I mentioning this to you? Because Jesus was set in the stage to do miracles. Okay, he was baptized with water. Then he was baptized. It said the heavens opened up and there came a dove and it descended upon him. And God spoke from heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Okay, we see the father, the son and the Holy Spirit three in one working together to accomplish the will of the father on earth. But why do I say that? Because Jesus was 100 percent man. And 100% God. And he decided to lay aside his deity, his Godhead, his God power, and be a man. Right, right. That means he needed to be baptized with the Holy Spirit for power. That means we need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit for power. Yes, and he Lord. said, I'm going to go away and I'm going to send another one and you're going to do mightier works than I. Amen. That means that we should be <laughs> seeing the works of the Holy Spirit in our church and in our lives. Yes, and it pleases the Father. Because if not, God wouldn't have said, this is my son in whom I will, am well pleased right. after he was baptized with the Holy Spirit. But you can believe every single time that God be begins to move in your life and he moves in a mighty way, we will be tested. <clears throat> because scene three, we see Jesus driven into the wilderness by who? The power of the Holy Spirit. I love that because you know what? Sometimes we find ourselves in trials and we say, God wouldn't put me here. God wouldn't do this to me. God, God didn't intend for me to go through this. He might have. Right, right. And guess what? If we made our own bed, <laughs> That's right. okay, if we made our own bed, he's going to bring us out of it too. But it's a test. See, the devil will tempt it, but Jesus will test you. That's right. And what was the test? Are we going to believe him? Are we, it says that Amen. when he was tested in the wilderness, it says that he was driven there with force. Okay, this was the will of God that he be tested. Remember, 100% man and 100% God. He laid his deity aside. So he was functioning as a man by the power of the Holy Ghost in the wilderness. That means that everything the devil threw at him, 
What did he lean on? The power of the Holy Spirit. He leaned on the word of God. The Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He leaned upon the word of God. What else did he lean on? He also said, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. That means he constantly put Jesus first. He constantly put God first in his life. What should we be doing as believers? Constantly putting God first in our lives. And guess what? Sometimes you're going to find yourself and God isn't going to be first. And you know what? He's just going to prick your heart and say, you need to put me first in that. You need to call on me first in that. Did you even pray about that? (laughs) Did you even ask me what I thought? See, because God can see things before you can. And he can warn you before you even see them coming around the corner. If we're in tune with the Holy Spirit and his word, that means we need to get in the word. (laughs) In order to hear him, we need to know him. In order to know him, you need to read what he has written to you that is living and breathing and sharper than any two-edged sword. He's going to show you. So we need to lean upon him. Why do I say all this? Because Jesus was set in the stage as this is the process that we're going to go through. We are going to repent. We are going to receive him. We should be baptized with water and the Holy Spirit. Does that make us saved? No. Being baptized in water and being baptized in the Holy Spirit does not make you saved. Repentance and belief. Repentance and And believe in Jesus Christ. Repentance and believe in the blood of Jesus. That makes you saved. God forgive me and help me and change me. And I believe in the blood and I believe in the cross. Here I am. God save me. Instantly. Instantly he saves you. Instantly he saves you. But now you're going to have to learn how to walk. (laughs) You're going to have to learn how to talk. You're going to have to learn where to go and what to do and how to be. And he's going to teach you how through tests, through trials, through circumstances. And what do you need? Your weapons of warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in the pulling down of strongholds through the word of God, through the spirit of God. Through placing him first. Hallelujah. And then after this test, Jesus comes out of the trial in power. In power. That's the goal of the trial. To strengthen your your faith that you would come out of it in power of the Holy Spirit. And you would be able to tell someone else. I've been there. I've done that. God changed it. God broke that. God healed me. He turned me around. And you come out changed in power. In power. What is the goal? To strengthen your faith and to give you power. Power that is greater than yourself. Power that when you tried to get out of that circumstance yourself, you couldn't get out. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Y'all ever been in a trial or a circumstance? Maybe you did it yourself or maybe you just found yourself there and you're like, there's no way I'm able to get free. There's no way I'm able to change this. There's no way that I'm going to be healed. There's no way I can have peace. There's no way I'm tormented in my mind day and night. There's no way out of this thing. And then all of a sudden, here comes the Holy Spirit saying, no, I made a way. I made a way on Calvary. I made a way through the blood of Jesus. I made a way for you. I made a way. Hold strong, brother and sister. Hold strong to the presence of God and the power of God and the word of God. That's what Jesus did. He held to the word of God through his trial and he came out in power. He came out in power. And I want to encourage you this morning, if you walked in this building and you are in a trial, you're going to come out in power. You're going to come out in power and you're going to come out and you're going to be like, it was only for Jesus. If it was only for Jesus, if you can, Lord, if you will, Lord, you can. If you will, Lord, you can. 
And then what happens? See, the power that Jesus gives you is not just for you, but it's for others. Yes. See, it's for your family. It's for your co-workers. Yes. Okay, it's for the people at Walmart. Yeah. Yes. It's for those that cut in front of you when you drive in. Come on. And you used to tell them off, but now you don't. Okay? It's for that sibling that gets on your nerves. On. Okay? It's for your spouse. Come on. Okay, to learn us, to teach us how to be good husbands and wives. Okay, it's for the brother and the sister. Okay, it's for the best friend that might get on your nerves every now and again. Okay, we're talking about real life. Amen. We're talking about real life in here. It's for the parent. Yeah. It's for the parent yes. that wants to show their children Christ. Yeah. It's for the youth leader. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that wants to show the children Christ. Yeah. We need power. We need power that is greater than ourselves. But guess what happens? Jesus shows up after coming out of this trial in power and he's ready to go to work. Yeah. Yeah. He's ready to go to work and he says, okay, where are we going? And he shows up in the synagogue. See, we're getting to the leper. But why am I telling you all this? Because the leper was sitting there and he was listening. All the townspeople gossip about Jesus and saying, Jesus is here. You know that one that John the Baptist was talking about? He's here. You know the one that he, John the Baptist said was mightier than him? He's here. Amen. You know the one who went into the wilderness and was tempted by Satan 40 days? He's here. And all of a sudden, Jesus walks into the synagogue where the, the Pharisees had been teaching and preaching the word of God. And there becomes a rumbling in the chair. All of a sudden, there's a man with a demon spirit inside of him. And he says, have mercy on us. I thought about that and I said, why didn't that demon get disturbed when the Pharisees were preaching and teaching? Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never seen it like that before. That's good. But as I was reading it, this whole time, I mean, the Pharisees were legalistic, so you know they were in the synagogue <laughs> teaching right. and preaching, right? Mm -hmm. But no one was disturbed until the authority of Jesus walked in the door. Amen. Yeah. And as soon as Jesus walked in the door, they said, have mercy on us. Let us alone, Jesus of Nazareth. Has thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. The demons knew who Jesus was. And they trembled that he was there. Amen. And then he says, Jesus said, rebuke him, saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. Why am I saying this? Because the leper is sitting over here dying and he's hearing Jesus is casting out demons in the synagogue. I wonder if the leper ever showed up to the synagogue. But probably not because he wasn't allowed. He was exiled. Right, right. See, you've ever had a situation that causes you to be cut off from other people around you? Yeah. <laughs> because, because the way we've been acting? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay? All right, let, let's just get real real quick. I used to be an addict, okay? I've been clean now 12 years, praise God. Glory to God. Never going back Amen. in Jesus' name, okay? Amen. By the grace of God. But... When I was an addict, Come on. they would be like, lock your doors. All right, all right. Angela is coming over Come for on. Christmas dinner. Right. Put away all the valuables. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Put away all the pills. Okay, I'm getting real with you real quick, Preach if you don't me. mind. Yeah, okay, put everything away that she could take. Mount the TV to the wall because that will disappear too. Right, right. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. No, come on. Right, right. That's how bad it gets. Yeah. Yeah. And they and and then eventually they were like, you just can't come, come no on. more. Come on. Even my own mother, she's listening right now. Mom, I love you to death. But one thing she had to do is say, Angela, get out. Yes. Mm -hmm. Get out. 
I can't help you anymore. Wow. And that's probably how the leper felt. Right, right. No one could help the leper. That's good. He was helpless. Mm. He was hopeless. He was sitting over here. But I just felt it in my wow. spirit that he began to hear yes. that Jesus was on the scene. Thank you, that Jesus was coming. The one that was casting out demons yeah. in the synagogue in front of the Pharisees who had no power. He was on his yes. way. He was on his way. He was on his way. Jesus. Lord. Yes, Lord. Every devil in hell has to tremble yes. and has to go in the name yes. of Jesus. My God. My God. I don't know about you, but there's times that I've been in my bed and I have been gripped in fear. I wish Pam was here because she told me a story the other day. You know how I like to put people out there when they tell me stories. Don't tell, listen, don't tell the preacher anything <laughs> that you really don't want told of here. Okay? Right. All right, even Pastor Matt too. But so there, when gripped in fear and you can't even speak the name mm. of Jesus, it's just inside you're like, Jesus, yeah. right. Jesus, right, right. Jesus. And she said this, Pam said this. I hope she listens to this. She said, all of a sudden, when she said, I couldn't even speak it out of my mouth. She said, I said it with authority yeah. Yeah, in my yeah. spirit. And I said, Jesus. She yeah. said, it wasn't empty anymore. Yeah. It was, I believe that Jesus could do it. She said, in everything, there was a peace that came over. See, if you haven't had peace in a while, Jesus can give you peace. Hallelujah. Jesus can give you peace. You don't got to run to that thing, this thing, that yes. guy, this girl, that place, this place anymore. Guess what? Run to the feet of Jesus yes. and he can yeah. give you peace. Hallelujah. He can give you peace. Hallelujah. Look, there's a lie that the enemy will tell you all the time. I was telling my youth last night. The enemy will tell you that God is withholding something good for you. Mm -hmm. That you can get it somewhere else God has everything good for you yeah, yeah. God is not withholding anything good from you and if he's withholding it from you then it's not good for you That's right. 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 check that out <laughs> see because he knows all things and he knows exactly what we need yeah. So if the enemy is a liar, yeah. and when he comes in, you bring the truth to a lie, and the lie is now dispelled. Yes. Okay, every single time the enemy comes and tries to tell you about yourself, you bring the truth to the lie, yeah. and the lie will become dispelled. Hallelujah. 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 Now, after that, I love the Lord because he is on the move. He's like, I'm casting out demons. Yeah, yeah. He, see, Jesus came to do something. Yeah, yeah. He came to be something, the Savior, and then he came to do something. Mm -hmm. He came to be something, and then he came to do something. And what I love is he did it in human form. Right. So we couldn't say anything. Wow, that's good. He did it in human form so we couldn't say anything. So then he hears of a woman that is sick. See, I'm telling you all this because he wants to meet every need. If you have been tormented, if you have been depressed, depression is real. Okay, and I will say depression is real, but I believe that the Lord can heal. Yeah. Okay, I will say oppression is real. Yeah. And I believe that the Lord can heal. Yeah. I will say that mental illness is real. Right. But I believe that yes. the Lord can heal. Yes. I will say that anxiety yeah. is very real. Yeah. But I believe that the Lord can heal. Yeah. I believe that the Lord can heal the sick in body. I believe that he can touch those who are broken and bruised. I believe if you have been battered and bound, you don't have to tell me, but you just lift yeah. your hands and tell him. Yes. God, I've been bound by this. I've been, you don't got to tell nobody but Jesus. Yes. You don't got to tell the priest. You just tell Jesus. Yes. You don't got to tell the pastor. Just yes. tell Jesus. Yes. Because yes. Jesus is the only one that can come and heal and deliver and break the bondage that you have been in. Hallelujah. So now all of a sudden, Jesus doesn't just stay in the synagogue and see the demons come out. He hears of another situation. And he goes, okay. So he shows up at Simon and Andrew and James and John's house. Simon's wife's mother lay sick. The in-law was sick. And they called on the name of Jesus. Would you call on the name of Jesus for your in-law? Wow. Okay, praise God. Got some saints in the house. 
But so all of a sudden, Jesus hears that this woman is sick in the bed and lay with fever. That word lay, think about this, means she was outstretched. She was laid up. She was so sick that she couldn't lift herself up. Is there something in our lives that has made us completely immobile? Mm. Yeah. It don't have to be a fever. Mm -hmm. Anything in our life That's good. that has made us completely right. immobile. That's good. Right. And I was thinking about this. I looked up fever and, and what happens. What are the symptoms that happen with a fever? You become sweating. So it's over. You're overexerted. <clears throat> You're sweating. You're overexerted. Have you ever been completely spent in your life from overexertion and trying to work something out? Yeah. Trying to figure something out? Trying to fix it? Trying to heal yourself? Trying, trying to do something? You were completely overexerted <clears throat> to the place that you're sweating. What does a fever have? It has chills. Have you ever been so afraid that you just don't know what to do next? You just don't know where to go next? And then there comes a headache with a fever. Constantly tormenting of the mind is what I thought about. You know, when I first got saved, one of the greatest tricks of the enemy was to tell me that I was still the same. Right. Mm -hmm. He would bring things in my path to make me want to go back. Bring drugs in my path, old friends in my path. Bring memories back where you could completely see it so clear that you could feel Feel it. Mm. And then all of a sudden my mind and my heart would go to if I'm still thinking about it, if I'm still experiencing these emotions about it, then I must be the same person. Mm. But that is a lie yes. from the pit of hell. You are a new creation yes. Yes. in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. Yes. That means it's dead. Yes. Yes. Don't go digging up dead bodies. Yes. It's dead. It is dead and you are new in Christ. Hallelujah. So the next time the enemy comes with that old lie again or that old friend again or that old dealer again or whatever your thing is, okay? Your thing might not be my thing. But the enemy knows exactly how to set the stage right. to get you to believe, ah, you ain't you ain't saved, you ain't that far along, Jesus don't care oh, about you, good. he didn't do nothing for you. No, the blood of Jesus, oh, see, bring the lie to the truth, oh, I am new and that is dead, oh, I am new hallelujah. and that is dead, hallelujah. I am new and that is dead. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Let me tell you, there's going to be memories. That's right. And you know what? I ask the Lord to wash our minds. Yes. Yes. God, wash our minds of all that filth. Yes. Yes. Wash our minds of all that garbage. Yes. Every hurt, pain, every abuse, yes. everything we've experienced in our lives, in our, in our homes. Okay? The home ain't exempt. I'm not just talking about the street. Yes. I'm talking about even in the home that we've experienced, in our childhoods yes. that we experienced. Things that we shouldn't have experienced, right, right, right. whether chosen to experience or not. Right. God, wash us and cleanse yes. our minds, cleanse our hearts, and yes. set us free from yes. those things. Hallelujah. But when you give your heart to Jesus, you are free, you are free, and you are free. Yes. Yeah. Now, does that mean that we might not stumble? Come on. No, but the, the Bible says that a righteous man falls yes, and gets back up. <laughs> okay, you know what? You can say, okay. Yes. I'm righteous yeah. by the blood of Jesus yeah. and I'm going on with Jesus just the same. Yeah. And you know what you can tell those people that say, still, Pastor Matt, he's still the same. Mm. You can say no because I might fall, but I'm going to still trust Jesus. Yeah. Um, you might, you know what that makes you touchable? Yeah. That makes you real. Yeah. That makes you a lover of God. Okay, but you still have areas that need to be worked on. Yeah. We still have areas in our lives that need to be worked on and that you know what happens sometimes do you when a baby falls down are you like <sighs> mad at the baby no. right you're like come on yeah. it's okay yeah. you can do it. and even the baby will cry mm. like I can't get frustrated <laughs> yeah, yeah. throw one of those tantrums mm -hmm. no come on you can get up yeah. you can do it you can do it. I seen Elijah help Esther learn how to ride her bike. And he didn't yell at her and be mean to her about it. He was like, come on, 
you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. And that's how the Holy Spirit is. He is your biggest fan. He is your biggest cheerleader. He's like, you can do it. You can keep going. You might get a bump. You might get a bruise. You might get a scar. You might turn the wrong direction, but I'm going to turn you around. I'm going to turn you around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Other things with a fever, loss of appetite. I thought about anxiety that comes. Anxiety and irritability that comes. A dehydration. Do you ever go through something so powerful that you feel like you're going to pass out? I don't know about you, but I've been through some situations that I literally feel like I can't breathe in this. I don't know what I'm going to do in this. And I'm completely dehydrated and weak. If you have found yourself in this position, the Bible says in Mark 1, 31, and he came. See, Jesus didn't just hear about your problem. He said, I'm going to come to your problem and I'm going to fix your problem. I'm going to come to it and I'm going to fix it. Jesus came in the house. I want to tell you this morning that Jesus is in this house. And Jesus is in this house. And Jesus wants to be in your house. And you got to invite him in. You got to open up the door and say, Jesus, come in and fix it. Jesus, come in and heal me. And you know what happened? He reached down, took her hand, lifted her up. And immediately, immediately the fever left her. Hallelujah. So now we come down and Jesus doesn't stop there. He heals diseases. He heals sick people. They came in droves of people. I mean, everybody was trying to touch Jesus. Everybody wanted Jesus to move. And that's how we should be of the church today. These seats should be filled This altar, when we have altar call, should be filled. And I'm not just saying that trying to manipulate you to get you up here. I just want to let you know. But this altar should be filled with us saying, God, I know. If you will, you can. If you will, you can. I heard about the demons that were cast out. I heard about the woman that was sick with a fever that was was raised up from her sick bed. I heard about this. I heard about that. You died for them. You died for me if you could do it for them you'll do it for me God move God move God move and that word we we see further on when he was healing the disease that means to relieve suffering I want to say this that doesn't mean to remove suffering when he healed the disease he was relieving sometimes God doesn't take us out of the trial that's right but he will relieve your heartache in it. Yes. Thank you. Sometimes he won't completely remove those friends that keep coming back in your life. But he will give you a relief in order to walk away. Yes. In order to say no. In order to go on with Jesus. And then we come here, we come to the leper. And I, I just couldn't get it out of my heart. I had to tell you all of that action-packed movie here of Jesus in the book of Mark. Because I could just see the leper. I could, Brendan, come here. Come on, Brendan. Let's go, buddy. Brendan already knew he was going to do this. So. I don't know what I'm about to do. That's okay. I could just see. All right, Brendan, sit right there. I could just see the leper. Now, a leper had a flesh-eating disease Mm -hmm. that destroyed him. So put your feet together. And caused him, if it ate his feet, not to be able to walk. Mm. (laughs) Act with me here, Brian. Act with me. Uh, And then... In his hands, put your hands together. He was completely immobile from being able to move. Mm. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> but not only that, oh my. y'all wow. laughing, but this is how we look. That's it. Come on. That's it. Y'all mm. laughing when, when, we, when we don't want to go the way that Jesus mm. wants us to go. Right, right. 
all of a sudden, we can't see clear. Come on. Right. All, all of a sudden, we can't hear. Come on, you, you start silencing the voice of the Holy Spirit uh -oh. when the Holy Spirit is calling out to you yeah. and pricking your heart. You can harden your heart so much that you can no longer hear what the Holy Spirit has to say to you. Can't move. Here's the leper, though. Broken, hopeless, yeah, yeah. disease-ridden. See, sin will completely wreck your whole life. Sin will eat at you. See, that's what was happening. Sin was eating the leper alive, okay? Sin will cause you not to be who God created right, you to right, be. Right. And here we are. Here's this leper sitting there. But all of a sudden, the people, could you imagine the people walking? Did you see Jesus cast out those demons? And, and the leper's over there. The leper's over there hearing. Oh. There's Jesus. Wait, there's that Jesus they were talking about. <laughs> casting out demons. Wait, if he can cast out demons. If he has the power to cast out demons. Wait, maybe he can touch my leprosy. Yes. See, no one else. Everybody left me. No one would come near me. They completely sent me away. See, that's what they did with lepers. They sent lepers away. That's right. yeah, yeah, yeah. They were alone. You ever been alone so much alone before? It's completely tormenting mm -hmm. to be alone. Well, then he hears Jesus healed. Amen. Oh, oh we're getting close now. <laughs> Starting to hit home now. What do you mean Jesus can heal? Jesus can heal? He raised that woman up out of that sick bed? Yeah. Wait. Then he hears Jesus was healing diseases. Jesus was healing diseases. Wait, I got a disease? Wait, I'm, I'm all alone? Wait, I had no one to turn to? Nobody even wants to be your friend anymore, bro. Nobody even wants to come near you anymore. Sometimes sin can stink so bad. Could you imagine that flesh rotting and what it actually... Come on, sometimes our attitude stinks so bad. Ain't nobody want to be around you no more. Because when we're living in sin, we harden our hearts. And in order to continue in sin, you must heart in your heart yes. because you don't want to hear what God has to say yes. anymore and you become nasty to yes. everyone around you yes. to keep them at bay yes. that's good and that's what was going on here yeah he was yeah. sitting there disease ridden alone hopeless helpless his feet were contaminated his hands were contaminated everywhere he went it was just contaminated he couldn't see he couldn't hear anymore and there came a leper to him see when jesus showed up that's so good the leper thank you jesus come on i'm gonna help you up man. stand up <laughs> yes stood up and jesus walked up can you get on your knees come on <laughs> okay but look this is what we look like sometimes coming right. in the household of god yeah after the world has beaten us Come up, yeah, yeah, after the yeah. circumstance has beaten us yeah, up, yeah. and the leper comes, he hears that Jesus <laughs> is here, and he falls on his knees, and he says, I beseech you, kneeling down to him and saying to him, if you will, you can make me clean. That word beseech means this is urgent. Yes. I need, I can't leave this spot until you move. Yes, I can't do anything. This is an urgent matter. Yes. I'm not going anywhere else. I heard you did it for them, yes. and I need you to do it yes. for me. This is an emergency. Yes. That's what, when we're in an emergency, what do you do? You call the police. You call an emergency vehicle. You call somebody that needs to come rescue you. Well, nobody could help him but Jesus. Yes. And he said, I need help. I beseech you. That's good preaching. And he kneels down to him. Why? Out of respect, out of honor, out of humility, saying, I can't do this any yes. more. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I can't 
do this. You're being a good sport. Any more. Hallelujah. And not only that, he doesn't. Could You ever have sinned before and then you try running away from like the presence of God or yeah. the people of God? Oh, snap, Pastor Matt. <laughs> okay. And we, oh, you come to church, right? We come to church. Hi, hi, hi. I'm at the door. Nobody asked me. Nobody asked me nothing. Don't want to tell you where I've been or what I've been doing or who I've been with. Right, That's right. none of your business. <laughs> But he didn't try that. Mm, that's good. He didn't try to run away from the presence of God. He was like, I'm not hiding myself no more. Yes. I don't need to hide. I don't need to run. Hallelujah. I can't do nothing unless he moves. I can't even get up unless he moves. I can't even see unless he moves. I can't even hear unless he moves. I don't know what to do unless he moves. He lays down and he sits there. And could you imagine Satan in his ear going, you are worthless. Mm. Could you imagine? You ever been at the altar or been right, in a situation right. before and you start calling on the name of Jesus right. and the enemy comes in like, he ain't going to answer you. Yes. Come on. You didn't do good enough. Wow. You didn't pray long enough. Wow. You didn't read the word enough. You remember where you were last night Come and on. he starts accusing Come us on. and telling us yeah. about ourselves, even if it's true. Wow. Come on. Wow. Jesus didn't run away from him. Oh, hallelujah. He was so glad that the leper was there. Yes. The Father is so glad that you are here this morning. And he said, The cross solidifies in the heart of man that this is the will of God. That this leper, that you, that me, be healed in Jesus' name. Be saved in Jesus' name. Be free in Jesus' name. Yes. And Jesus moved what with anger no with compassion Hallelujah. Thank, you. thank you lord he said but his compassion drove him Hallelujah. to action jesus compassion on you drives him to action and little by little like sabrina said he restores our sight. Yes. He restores yes. our hearing. Yes. Come on, Brennan, let's go. Come on, exercise for the day, bro. There we go. He begins to release you yes. little bit at a time, little bit at a time. Jesus' power begins to move, and he gets rid of everything that used to bind you and keep you there, keep you hopeless and helpless. He said, if you will make me clean. Yes. Yes. Make me clean. Thank you, Brennan. Thank if you Lord. will, make me clean. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he says, I know that you can. Yes. Naya, if you would come up, Hallelujah. whoever else is coming up. Thank you, Lord. As soon as it was spoken, as soon as it was spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him and he was clean. Yes. I want to tell you this. I don't know what you came in here with. And I don't need to know what you came in here with. I don't know if you've been struggling with something. I don't know if you just need to feel God's presence and you just need him to move. If you just need to know that he is real this morning. Yeah. I don't know if you have felt like you have been constantly in your mind tormented like that man that was demon possessed. Okay? Or maybe you've been dealing with something that has kept you immobile from where you want to be with God and God wants to get you up and get you moving forward. <coughs> I don't know what you walked in here with or if you're like the leper and all of a sudden you need God to move when he couldn't. Or if you felt alone this morning I want to tell you this that if he will he can Amen. he can yes. he can Amen. and you know what the cross told me he will Amen. <laughs> if you would stand with me this morning yes. he, the cross told me Amen. that he will That's right. yes. the cross told me that he will God wants to move on your heart this morning he wants to move on your life this morning and he wants it yes. to be immediately all of a sudden directly straight away you don't have to wait you don't have to wonder any longer but Jesus is calling you to come he's calling you to come so that he can move 